Hello, Assalamu alaikum, how are you? I hope you are doing well. My name is Dr. Yaha, I'm a clinical psychologist, psychotherapist, generalist therapist, and I am founder of CRPR, uh, that is Center for Research Prevention and Rehabilitation for Children and Adult, and I'm also founder of Global Alliance for Persons with Disabilities, Directors and Additional Needs, and uh, I'm also a Wednesday Mentee member for uh, Meeting International. And I just, uh, I'm also the uh, regional director for uh, Start of Autism uh, International. And uh, I'm going to present a very important topic that is called uh, temp Managing Temper Tantrums and Meltdown. And I have just created a, a very nice presentation for you, which is very elaborated. And uh, let's start presenting our presentation. Uh, first, I would like to. Um, First, I would like to uh, introduce uh, what is actually temper tantrums and meltdowns. First, we will define them and then we will see that how we are going to um, work along that. And so uh, let's define what is uh, temper tantrums and we are going to see how we can manage that. As I already told you about my introduction, uh, this is my introduction. Okay, Let, first we are going to start defining what is basically temper tantrums. So basically temper tantrum is a kind of a condition uh, that typically occur when a child denied what he, she want or have or wants to do. So it's a kind of a state when a child is um, uh, start crying, screaming, or maybe he start throwing stuff on the floor or just uh, spank, uh, you know, just uh, banging the door and he could do anything. Some, sometimes child hitting himself and um, maybe child start hitting other people as well. So in different people and different individuals and different children, uh, the temper tantrums and the showing of the aggression is different way. Let's see, uh, uh, let's start defining what is basically uh, let's break down the definition of a temper tantrums. Okay, let's talk about tribal toes. Okay, parents observe many tantrums during the tribal toes when young children are being to assert, uh, to assert independ independence. In fact, this tribal toes stage is typically experienced between one of two years of the years of the age because it takes a while to develop the needed motor language and problem solving skill. So, when the child is almost about three years old, then the child starts developing the concept of ego, and ego means that me. I. So when the child starts developing the concept of I, then he will start doing to start inserting his ego, and uh, he would say that when uh, you talk about children of same age, like three or four years of age, then they will say she's my sister. It means that this is I, and every everything belongs to me, and everything around me is uh, uh, important, and what I am, and everything is because of because of me. So it means that it's the time when the child is able to uh, one or four years old, then the child is able to develop needed motor language and problem solving skills then that's the movement and that's the time when they start developing the child start developing the um, uh, uh, the aggression kind of thing that he start developing uh, if you take something from the child and he will uh, start crying start screaming and uh, he can maybe he start throwing stuff on the floor as well so uh, like i told you about the uh, child to toes at, the, at that age child would uh, do that the reason of that temper tantrum could be it's a developmental system child is able to tell that what he's going to do and how he's going to um, develop certain skill. Like, for example, we talk about language skill, we talk about uh, the concept of I, me, and at that movement, psychosocial development is also in the process. And at that time, uh, if you talk about the uh, Freud stage, at that time, we start developing talking about uh, the concept of me that everything revolves around me and I'm good and I am the one who is important and everybody should pay attention toward me. So um, uh, at that moment, maybe the child start acting irrational. So uh, because he's a child, he don't know what is rational, but is irrational. So at that moment, the child can, show, uh, can throw, throw temper tantrum. Okay, let's talk about toddlers and preschoolers. They are developed prone to tantrum because they lack refined skill in any one area that sort through frustration on their own. This is because, okay. At that age, why the child will start, why the child will throw temper and because maybe these skills are not developed yet. It, start, it could be just because of language skill. Maybe the child is not able to communicate properly, but, but, but child needs, why child needs something. 
and uh, maybe the child is hungry, maybe the child is not able to tell your needs. So that could be a reason of showing temper tantrum. Maybe the child is not able to socialize with other children. That could be a reason that why the child is showing temper tantrum. And maybe the child is in pain and the child is not able to tell you why he's in pain. And that could be the moment when the child is showing temper tantrum. So these are basically need based. When the child's certain needs are not fulfilled, then the child might show temper tantrums. And uh, other reasons could be they have an emerging desire to become independent. Like I told you, when the concept of I emerged, when the concept of ego emerged, then the child starts showing independence. So the child would want to do everything by himself. And that's the same age when the child is trying to copy elders. When the child, if you talk about the girl, they are, uh, they are you know, they're uh, dressing up like their mother and uh, uh, the, uh, they want to sit in the, chair, in the chair where the mother is sitting. And maybe they want to wear the shoes of their parent as well. And if we talk about a boy and the, uh, the, the father, of the child is riding a bike, maybe the child wants to sit on the bike as well. So at that moment, the child is trying to become independent, but have limited motor skill and cognitive skill. So if the child wants to become independent, but the child lacks motor skill, maybe the child is not able to do something. Maybe the child is not able to reach to that certain point. Maybe the child is not able to, uh, uh, to think in his mind, how I can solve that problem? How can I talk to someone that it's my thing? Just give me back that thing. If you talk about a small toy. And the cognitive skills also means planning, organization, execution. For example, the child want, want to say that if you want to go to outside the room, you want to turn on the light, but a child could do. A child could drag a chair and the child could sit on that chair or stand on that chair and the child can turn on and off that light. But if the child lacks certain skill, which could be motor skill at certain, and he he's developed, it's basically, maybe it is under development, then the child might fail to do that. And he could throw that tramper tantrum at that point as well. And if the child is not able to uh, be independent, that, that could be a possible reason. Next reason could be they have emerging development and skills that may communicate want, need, and frustration. For example, the child don't like certain things and the child is not able to communicate with you. For example, if you talk about autism, then the child, then the children, even in that, if you talk about autism, the child lack uh, important or you could say necessary skill to say something the child is not able to communicate that the child is in pain the child is not able to communicate the child wants something the child is hungry and the child don't have language have poor low or less language or no language at all so it could be a reason why the child could show temper tantrums and just because the child is not able to say you something the child is not able to uh, tell you his wants and needs the child is not able to express his emotions so that could be a reason of temper tantrums and if we talk about prefrontal cortex of the brain has not developed yet if you talk about intellectual disability. So in these children, it might could be a reason that the child is not, not able to organize and the child is not able to do certain things. The child is not able to, uh, you know, complete his skills. The child don't know how to uh, eat or how to say something or how to open the door or how to uh, undress himself. So it could be a reason that the child might show temper tantrum. And this is a brain center uh, responsible, uh, center area, which is responsible for emotional regulation and social behavior. So they don't have the ability to regulate. It means that maybe there's a fight children are playing with each other and somebody has taken some, that thing from the child. So if the child is not able to regulate these emotions, the child maybe, you know, if we have seen a lot of children who come to their mother and say that we want certain thing, this child, this child, the child hit us, they have taken something from me. So at that time, the child is able to communicate to you. So instead of showing uh, frustration, the child have a place where he can go and he can tell about, uh, tell about his problem. And maybe the mother can get to give him something or maybe the child lost something and the mother find him, that thing for him. But if you talk about those children who are, don't have uh, certain skills, the child who don't have skill to um, uh, communicate, the child who don't have skill to hold something and eat something if the child is hungry, let's say the child is hungry, let's say it's thirsty. So that could be a reason for a child to show up showing temper tantrum. And other reason could be they're developing an understanding of their world and it's often anxiety producing. The anxiety and lack of control often result in tantrums when it, it all get to too much to manage. Okay, It means that when the child is just trying to, uh, uh, sometimes child are doing those things when they are, new people came into the house, they're going to new place, they're going to the market, they're going, they're, they're going in the car or uh, you're giving him something new to eat and the child is not able to do, you know, don't know how to do, but how to do, how to solve, for example, that problem. How the child, if the child might not understand that how to wear his own shoes, how to wear new shoes, uh, how to uh, untie his, uh, his or her hair, how to unbutton the shirt, or how to, uh, if the child lack motor skill and maybe he don't know how to eat certain things. So, and maybe the child don't know uh, that the child need more. So these are certain important skills. If you talk about developmental milestones, these are some important skills 
language skill, motor skill, cognitive skill, social skill. If the child lacks those skills, then they are put, they're, they're, that is the reason why the child is showing temper tantrum. And if the child has certain level of anxiety, maybe the child is, is in fear, the child feels something that the child cannot handle that thing. And first problem is the child is not able to handle that thing. And the standard problem is the child don't know how to take help from someone. So, and the third thing could be the child don't know how to communicate this to some person that please help me out. Like seeking somebody help or seeking some kind of, uh, you could say, assistance. If the child don't know that, then that could be a reason for the children. Maybe they are told or maybe in the, they are in, in preschool and they start showing temper tantrum. So crying is a response when our child is in need, when a child is hungry. Uh, I'm talking about infants. When they're hungry, then they start crying. When they are happy, they start crying. Maybe when they don't, they want something. They start crying. They 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 show discomfort, so they start crying. So it means that that could be a only way that the child is communicating to their some kind of need, some kind of bond, some kind of discomfort, some kind of pain. So we need to understand first that why there could be the reason. Why what's the reason? What are the temper tantrums? And what is the reason that why the children are doing that thing? That is the reason I'm. Uh, we are trying to you know uh, understand. What could be the possible reason in different ages that why a child is showing temper tantrums? So, another reason could be the child might lack self regulation. So, let's see what is self regulation. At, as children age, they develop self regulation skill to manage the emotion associated with anxiety and anger. If tantrums, outbursts, persistent past was in developmental appropriate social emotional difficulties may arise from maladaptive response to anger and anxiety. Okay, it means that. For example, uh, uh, like you, we usually used to say that, that these, these are kind of learned behavior. For example, if a child is crying and you give them something and uh, maybe child, the thing is not important for that child, and then maybe the thing is some kind of thing that could, uh, could harm that child, but even then you give that thing that to the child, for, let's say about a mobile phone, and you give that to the child that, that should, so that the child start um, crying, the child don't scream, the child don't stop, uh, throw stuff on the floor, the child, the ch if my the child is eating, the child don't like something and he's eating and if you are not giving him something like he, that he's like, and he throw that stuff on the floor. So it means that the what a mother is giving a response to a child, the mother might be giving him some food to eat uh, or his favorite food, or maybe that my child might, might, the mother might give him to mobile so that he can uh, play happily or eat happily. So these are some things that the child learned through his developmental history. For example, if there was a, uh, the child was going towards something and a child, uh, which the child, uh, you could say, the child hit by something and he's on the floor and he start crying and the elder move toward that child and just ask him to uh, stop crying because um, because he's creating, creating a lot of noise and you don't get this idea that if a child would uh, learn to fall, then he have to learn that how to get up for himself, by himself, independently. So if you help that child with, uh, to, to make him st stop crying so that he's making a lot of noise. At that moment, you just give him a immediate, com uh, immediate comfort or immediate gratification of something, for example, immediate gratification of the food or the reward that he wants. So at that moment that you give a tool to the children to manipulate you in the later life. So it means that just to avoid maybe a little kind of discomfort in front of you, you are just giving a child to a tool so that he can use that later on. And that these are learned behavior. And maybe child don't even understand that they are doing these things. And they, whenever they want to get something, then they will cry. Whenever they want to get something, then they will die on the floor. Whenever they want to eat something which they want, uh, their favorite food, then they, they will throw the whole food on the floor. So you need to understand that thing that if you say no, that no means no. So self-regulation means that these are some kind of behavior that the children learn to regulate their emotions. So in, in uh, response to some, some, uh, some kind of discomfort and maladaptive things. So you need to understand that just to regulate their anxieties and manage their aggression, the reaction you give to that child is very important. And if you don't understand at that point that you are giving him some kind of, you know, uh, making him, um, pampering him without any reason, or giving him more attention that that is not required over there, or maybe you are not ma making him more dependent on you, so that you are you love that child. It means it doesn't mean you are just um, uh, you. It means that you are just pampering him for the wrong reason. You are loving him for the. Uh, I'm not saying that you should not love your child. You should love your child, but you over here the point is that you are giving him attention for, or uh, you are rewarding his behavior, which could be problematic for him in the later life. So it means that you have to see what you are doing with your child if. 
uh, a child is uh, asking for something which is not good for the child then you need to uh, you know you have to uh, listen to that cry because if you not listen to that cry ultimately you will go to sort towards some therapist and you will say that my child is not eating anything my child don't want to do anything because he wants a certain thing and we are and the whole frame family is trying to make him comfortable he is not able to comfortable and he is not in going to some comfort zone because he's showing a lot of effort at home and when the child is going to go to the school and when the child go into the practical life then these kind of issues uh, can create problems for him or her okay let's see how we can manage temper tantrums the first thing is okay you need to understand what is the motivation or purpose of that child you need to recognize that emotion that what is the purpose purpose of that child for that kind of temper tantrum so recognize the motivation of that behavior then to get attention what is the reason this could be to get the attention to get the child what he wants or need denial or wants or need delayed access to that thing whatever we wants or need so over here you will understand that why the child is showing temper tantrum what you said no to him and what was the reason that was denial to his wants or need second thing would be once you identify that thing when you start thinking about that behavior what was happened before that when the child showed that tantrum and after that uh, during that then you will get the idea why the child is showing that temper tantrums okay so once you identify that why the child is showing this the child is why your child is tantruming then you can respond more appropriately recognize your child needs in the moment and without giving into them instead of you need to understand that why the child is doing that so you, you can work on that behavior so you have to need to understand why what is the motive of that child at that moment of showing certain kind of behavior reinforce positive behavior okay once you identify next could be catch your child when he or she is responding appropriately on small problems and praise or reward him for great behavior for example you might see that the, uh, uh, the child usually cry on something but one day the child, the child was not crying or something happened that so if you start responding to that thing you child praising your child you could give your child your hug you could you could hug a child you can you know uh, you can praise your child in some other way so the child understand and what is appropriate behavior if i reward uh, uh, appropriately then the my mother or my caretaker is going to respond me appropriately okay it could be hug high five way to go are always a very pr productive way actively avoiding those temper tantrum and outbursts and teaching your child that he or she and your would uh, have your attention for the time and he is successful too so it means that for getting your attention he need to behave in certain way so it means that he would get this idea that if i will do this thing in that moment if i want something and if i go to uh, instead of you know crying if i even go to my mother and ha hold her hand or maybe that point you know point about that thing if the child is not verbal he will get this idea that if i will do that activity then my mother is going to listen to me so that could be a way that your child will learn and you need to show him that how we can do or if you know the child is not able to do or the child is not able to behave appropriately then you can teach your child the child but how he can do that next for calling attention to what he want does right in the moment will also help the child build on those successful positive response for the future so you can tell him that like i told you already then you need to show your child what is appropriate behavior instead of telling him no you cannot have this let's have this let's try this and when you the child will uh, get this idea that um <clears throat> what could be the right response so maybe next time instead of crying instead instead of you know throwing stuff on the floor maybe he come to you <clears throat> sorry maybe he come to you and only maybe he hold your hand and take toward you to to that thing if, in the case if he's not verbal okay is not not normal but or uh, you he could uh, you know hold your hand or you he could point toward that thing maybe and uh, you know maybe he come to you and point toward that thing could be a step toward managing that temper tantrums next you could build skill for success like i already told you children who demonstrate temper tantrum frequently struggle with impulse control problem solving delaying gratification negotiation communication wishes and need needs knowing what appropriate is given the given situation if you are not going to manage your child temper tantrums on the time and if you are not able to manage the child wants and need and how to communicate to you when they want and need something then their child will have a lot of issues which could be he could have issue he might be have issues the problem impulse control problem solving delaying gratification negotiation skill communication wishes and needs wants and in social situation as well next could be and self soothing look for opportunity to build on these skill with your child and help him to be successful that is 
to work on these skill outside and temper tantrum movement. <coughs> So you need to work with your child if the child is showing showing certain kind of temper tantrum. In the next slides, I would like I would tell you how we can do that. And uh, and you need to work on the child when the child is not having this kind of temper tantrum. I mean, for example, when the child is angry, then he's out of listening anything. Then he could not listen to you, and he could not listen to any kind of reason. So when the child is calmed down, then 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 you have to talk about all these things. Then you have to talk about what happened at that time. But we can know about that thing, how we can solve that issue in certain a certain uh, in certain situation. So you need to talk to the child once the child is calm and he is able to communicate to you. And it's, it will be like you are crying, the child is crying, you are shouting, the child is shouting. So it's not going to help you out. It may be worse than that situation. So you can others we can also try these uh, tips. Uh, let's talk about that and uh, try this tip that could help you out uh, to track their temper tantrums agree on frustration signal you need to understand why the child is frustrated so it could be a needed in any way either it's attention need either it is the child needs something either the child is something so it could be it could not be all the time attention seeking behavior it could be the child actually needs something so you need to instead of looking toward that thing the child is attention seeking you need to understand that why the child is doing it maybe the whole day you spend with the with the with that guest you have at home and you did not pay attention to your child so if you might spend five or ten minutes with your child then the child will be able to or even if you talk to your child that we have guest today and we are going to do certain activity when the guests are gone so you give a kind of you could say a way out of that thing and uh, you have that you know that that the child would show start showing temper and the child will start playing so you already have a solution for that thing because you could you could talk to your child that yesterday we have guests we are not able to play something we can do that later on assign a calm space this is what i also do when the child is crying because uh, when the child is crying you know same thing that the child don't understand anything and the child is not going to understand to your reason reasons as well in fact the child will start hating themselves if you hear the child that why he's crying and being like that and you don't love your child for the way he is so you need to assign a place you could do that by assigning a place in in, in your room or in your whole house that if you're angry, angry, then you can go to that place. If you're crying, you can go to that place. So a calm place could be even a sensory play area as well. So if your child is, um, you know, um, crying, you could go to that place and you can uh, assign that, you can ask your child to go and cry there when the child is normal, then he, he can come to you. Or you can take the child to the place where the child feels more happy. So he, he can feel calm. I'm talk, especially talking about those children who have sensory issues, who are with autism, ADHD and other problems. Think about what is causing the tantrum like auditory. You need to talk, you need to think about the reason why the child is doing that and why the child is behaving in certain way. Next is you need to set clear expectation. So it means that when you're talking to your child, it means sometimes why the child is because a lot of times the parents are trying to trick their child by saying that we will do this, we will do this, we will eat this, we will do that, and stuff like that. So what happened? But that the when you don't give a child what you ask that you will give him. For example, if you said to your child that we will eat some ice cream flavor and you don't do that when the child performs something or when the guest or gone, you did not pay with that child and that that could be a definite reason the child will start from temper tantrum so once which you you know uh, pledge with your child you have to follow that because that is the way the child is going to trust you if you're not doing that then that is the first step that child start mistrusting you and the child is going away from you and if if the child would face a bigger problem in the life later on then the child will not come to you and the child could get into some serious trouble. We, we, these are some small things, we don't think about that, but these could have long repercussions. So we have to think about that. And acknowledge your child's feeling. If the child is crying, then let him cry. If the child is angry, then let him show anger, but in appropriate way. Like I told you that there could be a reason go there and cry there and uh, uh, maybe the child uh, tell you, maybe the child, uh, show you what he wants, how, what, what he needs, and the child have to talk to you about that problem, and you have to ask him what is the problem. So that anger is a feeling. The child is angry when he did not get that thing, because in any way, there was a need involved. Either it is hunger or thirst, or either it's some kind of attention from you, or maybe the child wants to go to some place. So there is a need over this, and you need to understand why the child is doing that. And if that thing is not appropriate, then you can talk to that child. And you can ignore it as well in the when sometimes the child is doing this because of reason like there was a mother in the session she asked me that the child wants to have some kind of you know junk food all the time they have they have a place in the 
house the child want to go over there all the time and the child want that thing and she will don't go away from that place so but how much a child could eat maybe one packet if a child want you could give him back one packet and you have to tell him play that you're not going to get that packet no matter what you do no matter from no matter i mean that you have to be careful about uh, danger safety issue otherwise if a child is playing if a child is uh, you know showing things on the floor let him do at that time after that you can teach him to you know uh, you could say uh, you teach him to uh, put everything on that own appropriate places so this is the this is the strategy i'm giving and praise the behavior you want to see and if the child is even calm for five or 10 minutes and after that he was doing that or after that you know even he start stop crying at that moment and you have to praise that child because that's how you're going to teach the child that what does a good behavior mean and what you want from that child and that is and you can tell by you are telling him also how to regulate his emotion and how to uh, tell you something uh, instead of getting impulsive or instead of getting um, angry or instead of getting acting out now let's talk about meltdown okay meltdown is a little bit uh, distinctly from uh, temper tantrums uh, with temper tantrum it could be attention seeking it could be with the reason or sometime when a child get that thing that, that then the temper tantrum might go off because over there we talk about it but meltdown could be any it could be because of sensory load and there could be other problems as well and other reasons as well so let's go toward meltdown and how we can manage meltdown of the child so what is the meltdown it occurs when the child lose control over his or her behavior and uh, can only be calm by a parent or other man uh, reaches to the point of exhaustion so when the child is having any kind of meltdown so try to stay close to the child it's one important technique to understand that nobody could calm child until unless that the parent so parents or caregiver or caretaker uh, close to that child so if a child have any kind of meltdown if you cannot do anything because i have seen mother start crying so you just stay with your child and sit over there with the child no matter the child is child child is saying you she don't want to sit with you you don't want to see you and i have seen and i have children see children they are doing that kind of thing even then you have to stay closer to your child okay so he know that no matter uh, because sometimes meltdowns because it could be of some kind of kind of sensory load and the child don't understand that what happened is what is happening is around maybe he's he's older from something so you need to stay there with your child meltdowns are reaction that are fe of feeling overwhelmed and are often seen as a result of sensory overstimulation like i already told you tantrum can lead to meltdown so it can be ha hard to tell the difference between the two outburst response it appropriately if you are not attentive and your child you need to understand your child's sensory signal for example i have seen a child having a lot of meltdown and sometimes it also happen that the child might have felt something in the morning time and the child have that meltdown for it could be for days i have seen children melt down for two or three days also so you don't understand that what could be the reason so i was talking to a, a mother day before yesterday and uh, uh, she told me that the child uh, because i was working with that child the child was uh, i tried everything which i the child was not responding to me the child was not responding in the session so i even took three days to talk to that mother and i was talking to her daily and no what happened she told me that the child was uh, uh, playing with his father and his father is out of station so there is no one in the home and the child is um child misses his father that was reason that there was just misses father and the second thing was that the child was crying without any sound and he was crying for one or two hours and he did did for three days and, and i tried everything and he was not communicating with me he was not telling me anything the child was normal but also but the thing was that but that was the reason the child was having that kind of meltdown so it could be any reason so meltdowns are full body reaction to be overwhelmed there are more extreme than tantrums and kids aren't in control of them so sometimes the child start uh, throwing themselves on the floor they will bang their head you need to, to stay with your child so that they don't bang their head on the floor so the thing is that you need to stay with the child if you don't do anything it's a way wait because sometimes you cannot do anything children children don't need to children don't listen to reason when they are aggressive when they are stimulated when they start crying then then they are screaming just stay with your child over there then you can you can do one thing if it's in a social situation then you can remove your child from that place so you to uh, to the important thing is you need you need to stay with your child either the father is the mother is a caretaker or caregiver okay let's talk about how you can manage uh, temper tantrums okay. so
important thing is sometimes the child have temporary tantrums, then they 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 have anxiety. What is going to come next? And I have seen a lot of children have this kind of you know meltdowns or temporary tantrums. Then you are changing things because if we talk about autism, autism we talk about ADHD as well. So they the more they stick to plan, the less less anxiety they have. So what you could do, what could be the small tips and strategies tips. Visual schedule, you need to tell the social stories. Social story could be in the form of pictures as well, and you could create your own story also. Check off place, you need to tell the whole schedule for the day. We are going to do this thing, unless we did this, we did this, we did this. Now we are going to do that. If the child is not able to read, then you can tell your child. And activity or task schedule as well. So scheduling is very important. Just tell the time, at 10 o'clock, we are going to do that. At 11 o'clock, we are going to do that. At 12 o'clock, we are going to do that. Routine sensory diet activity, it means that you have to have a pace at home. If you talk about children who have, who have sensory issues, who have sensory stimulation disorder, who have um, SPD, sensory processing disorder, with autism, with ADHD, even with this kind of issue could, could happen with, uh, with intellectual disability as well. Even those issues who, no problem, those children who have behavioral issues, and even other children as well, without, don't, who don't have behavioral issues. So who don't have, who have issues with the impulse control and anger behavior, who are, ODD and other kind of issues as well. So any child could have these problems and you just need to understand that how you're going to uh, give your child a sensory diet and it could be anything, it could be a room, you could massage your, your child or you can have you know the, that uh, sensory play room or you can have a room at home where the child could feel calm. So you need to do that and you need to do sensory integration therapy with the children as well. And seek out quiet and safe spread like I told you about, about temperature as well. So in a room, you have a place, an idea, where there is chances of no sound at all, minimum sound. So just go there, you can you could have colorful lights in the room, the room should be, need to be dark or it's it, it up to yourself, your child, your expectation your child needs. So how he can have a good place area, area where he can calm down. And remember to breathe also and just and sometimes it happens that the mother condition or the father or the caretaking condition is worse than the child. So just take a breath. And when you're going to, you know, you're deep breathing, then your, your stomach should come out and you have to inhale the whole oxygen you're inside, okay? So after that, when you just calm down and you take, just count to three and inhale in how three to four times, then you need to understand what you're going to do to your child. So just have a place at home and take your child over there. Okay, let's talk about other thing also, what we can do about temper tantrums. Let's see what we can do, what can, we can do before meltdowns. Like once the meltdown is passed, what we can do over that? Get to know the knowledge triggers, you need to understand what the child, it could be a smell, it could be a sound, it could be a uh, streak sound, machine sound, baby crying sound, a smell, people, certain people, or you could say uh, some places, some, uh, some places, so it could be some kind of, but even sometimes it could be some kind of food also. So just, they are not the same for every child. And sometimes it, it is possible that the child is not having, going to have a meltdown from the same thing or temperature from the same thing. So you need to understand that also. So it's different, different from every child and your child and your child may not be acting to you, something obvious. For some kid, it could might be emotional or sensory overload. For other, it might be unexpected changes or pain or fear, knowing your child's trigger can make it easier to avoid meltdown. You may notice that your child gets anxious before school or fall apart at the end of the day, or maybe meltdown help happen close to meal time or bedtime. In that case, hunger or fatigue may be a trigger. Or maybe notice you notice that there are certain places where that they happen, it could be noise or crowded places. So whenever the meltdown happen, you need to understand that what happened before that. So just stay keep and quiet in a quiet place and start thinking about that where that, that, that happened what was a plate what could be the trigger who came into that place what was what, what was the smell did you give yourself something your child did you say something did somebody say something or uh, some what was the environment what was it what was the environment like what was changing in the environment so you need to understand about that and for understanding you have to think about notice when it is escalating okay if you catch the sign of early enough, you might be able to help your child come before full blown meltdown occurs. Common warnings could be trouble thinking clearly, making decisions or responding to question. Maybe the child stop responding. You maybe the child stop eating. Maybe the child uh, uh, stand up. Maybe the child uh, start wandering in the room. Maybe the child start flapping his hand. Maybe the child is flipping, or maybe the child do some certain. Maybe the child uh, put something in his mouth. So it could be anything. Uh, maybe the child don't even know how to drink water. So it could be anything you need to understand 
uh, and you need to think about that. Repeating thoughts and questions over and over again. Maybe the child is insisting on same thing again and again. So you need to understand about that. Refusing to follow direction or corporate and the child stop listening to you or stop listening to you at all or stop responding to you. Trying to shut out noise, sight or other sensitive things or trying to run away or hide. So maybe the child do this, maybe the child start doing this, maybe the child do this and running in the place and crying, maybe the child start giggling, maybe the child start closing his eyes or it could be, and it, maybe the child start doing this, maybe the child start doing this. So I'm just saying you because I have worked with these students and I have seen these things, so that, that's why I'm telling you this. Maybe the child, you have to shut down the noise, uh, but it could be anything, maybe the child stop, turn off the light, turn off the music, turn off the TV, it could be anything. Moving restlessly in fidget like I told you and pacing and complaining of physical issues like dizziness, heart pounding. It could be anything, and if the child is able to tell you, it could be any kind of panic-like situation he is able to communicate to you. But what is the next thing? Try to distract from that trigger. If you have seen that, then you can try to distract. For some kids, the escalation plan can be interrupted and uh, interrupted, and uh, it might help to distract your child with a different task or activity. So if the moment you see, you get this idea, maybe the child is in a different place, so you might give him some alternative activity, maybe some favorite activity. You could have a favorite toy in your bag and you can give that to your child. Or you can have something favorite, give it to that child, uh, some favorite toy. You always give a child. A sensory toy is very important over there. So whenever you go outside, you have you should have a two or three sensory toy with a child like in your bag so that the moment you get this idea that the child is going to create some kind of trouble or this is some kind of trouble situation, the, the child could be, uh, you know, freak out at these places. So just give that thing to that child so that you avoid that kind of meltdown in that case. Be patient also. Sometimes few things don't work. So uh, your next step may be try to stop by explaining quickly, but talking fast and loud often make it worse. Give your child more space and more time to process what you are saying. Use short, concrete sentences and take away your child need to make decisions. Okay, so it means that when your child is so high or so into his thing, the child is not able to listen to you. So just be patient. Just Stay over there. If you are not saying anything, just stay quietly and sit over with your child. You can just take your child to some place and try to talk to your child about that and just try to uh, be there with, with your child. If he's not able to listen to you, when the child is a little bit okay, then try to talk to your child. Okay. During meltdown, do a safety assessment. Uh, when your child is screaming and throwing things, it may feel like an emergency, but it doesn't mean that it that the question to consider is if, if, if it is when anyone going to hurt or not. So you need to understand that also. If you're sitting with your child, either you, if you say that, I'm just sitting with your child, maybe the child start, start doing something that could hurt him, so you need to better understand that as well. Be, re, re, be reassuring. It takes trial and error to know whether your child wants physical distance or a firm hug or a touch, but keep your voice or body language calm, it will help your child. And make sure your child knows that you are there and understand that the child, whenever he, he feels scary, or out of control, then you're, you are there for your child. Give some space to your child. Like I told you, if you're not, if you're out in public, try to help out your child, move out that to a quiet place. If you're at home, that see if you can get your child to a spot which is calm. If it's not possible, move your child and ask people to go give you both some space. And uh, it, that's how you can go to uh, manage that meltdown. And tone it down, tone it down by light, keep things quiet, turn off the light. You could, uh, you, have, you could have a dim light at your home and you could turn off that light. And uh, in your home, if you're not able to, willing to move that child, then you please, you, you can request other people to uh, just leave that room and go to the other room. So uh, standing in the doorway can make it feel blocked in also. So just let that child in that room and you can go to outside or you can just give it the space to the child and go to outside and just, uh, uh, you could say, uh, just make sure that you, the child, that danger safety, safety issues in your mind. Consider your postpartum meltdown, and you need to understand everything that what you are going to do. So, talk, think about that, and work on that. Then start thinking about how to re rearrange your child when the meltdown is over. Rather than do something that start up again, you may need to be abandon your shopping trip. If the meltdown was triggered by any emotional conversation, you may need to back away from that topic. You can find a new way to approach and you can even use a new, new door, a new place. And if you're going to a certain place with, with the child just don't like them, the child could sit in the in the car with somebody, with the father, you can have that shopping, which, which is important. And you can go come, and come back that, to that place. So it is very important. You need to consider all aspects. Okay. And what you could do after the meltdown, 
let's talk about that take time to recover give time time to serve some space to the child let him split and you have and you could talk about that maybe after one day keep calm your child might feel embarrassed or guilty you will probably see physical exhaustion as well so give him some time to recover and after some time you can talk about that find the right time to talk you can help your child make sense of what happened right after a meltdown may not be the best time true when you both are calm here are some ways to approach that and because you have to talk to your child about that what happened so what you could do about that give your child a heads up give guidance notice that you're going to talk and be reassuring that your child is not in trouble so when everything is okay so instead of uh, being aggressive on your child saying that you did very bad i'm very embarrassed on you because that situation was not in the child control because we talk about sensory overload we talk about the trigger could be not in the child control because the triggers are coming from the environment environment is not in our control in environment is not in, in, in nobody in control and a child has certain kind of condition so what you could do about that is you need to first you need to tell your child that you love him in any way and when you're talking to your child you need to talk like in the way that um, uh, but don't say that you you are embarrassed on that situation you just say that uh, yeah, that uh, situation happened and uh, you did something what we can do about that if a child is verbal if a child is not verbal then even then you have to talk to your child don't assume that your child don't understand it the child understand everything just go to the child and uh, said that this happened you this happened you behave in a certain way and that was the reason and next time we will try to avoid avoid that thing and if you dislike something then you can tell me you can talk about that so you are giving a space to a child that if he don't feel anything if he don't like anything at least he would come to you if he cannot talk to you or if he's not verbal so we have to establish the important or a uh, a way of communication with our children so that they can understand that if they have some kind of trouble they could come to us in any way if either they talk or not so we have to give heads up our child and you need to tell your child that he manage his when the child manage his temper tantrum in some way then you have to uh, tell him that he's not in trouble that was not his in, because the child might feel guilty that what what going to happen with me because maybe sometime this happening in a social situation that were happening in some kind of marriage ceremony some reception anyway we have to think about that be brief talking about a meltdown can make kids feel bad or defensive say what you need to say but try to avoid saying the same thing over and over again so instead of you know sometimes uh, we say uh, a lot of hurtful thing because when the child is emotional we are also emotional and we, we might be angry as well i mean we might have you know kind of a depressive episode or guilty as well that we are not able to to make it our child the child is in the problem because of us because as, as a parent i have seen a lot of guilt in the parent so um if you want to talk to your child maybe you can write that script so the and try to be more supportive as much supportive as you can brief to the point and uh, uh, it, it could be maybe the child said it was not our fault they, they could make them feel bad or defensive also so uh say whatever you want to say but you have to communicate your child in any way what happened over there and what we can do about that so it is important to over here communication was important make sure that your child understand what you are trying to say because like i told you it should be uh to the point and in the clear word as well don't give him mixed message mixed signal is like yes or no do this we will do this we will try this don't avoid this thing like uh, you are giving two uh, different things so talk about uh, the child your point and you, you should also understand what you know what you what you are trying to say to the child that ask your child to tell what they talk about but what they feel and how they feel and answer the question the child asks you if you decided on action plan see if your child can repeat it for you or not so what could be the action plan you should also understand that what you are going to do next time to avoid that kind of certain situation so that is all for today and i'm sure uh, the effort i tried to put in uh, talking about uh, temper tantrums and ment all might help you all those who are li li listening to that uh, thing over here you need to understand that sometimes parents come to me and they say that we cannot do and maybe this uh, uh, there was a mother and she told me that she start tried, started trying because the child started hit her, her Uh, he was not really angry, and I told her that this certain boy when he's angry, he's he be he hit me, and I just don't say anything to him. 
because that is not his fault he don't maybe he have uh, you know listen or you could say he have learned that from something that if you are angry just hit if your aggression just hit so uh, that why that might be a learned behavior from some places so instead of getting on you know getting into that we cannot do something what we can do about that child we can uh, start uh, uh, working on the communication of the child so that to communicate effectively if the child cannot say any word then at least a the child could give us a gesture that they don't like the sign of no they don't like they want you to go to some place they are pushing that if, they, if the child is not able to say you anything then at least if the you tell him that he if he start pushing you to some other place or he want you to go to some other place it could could be the indicator as well so you know your children very well and what you could do about that also so uh, it's all about uh, and the problem over here sometimes something which called uh, this temper tantrum and battle might don't don't cause the same thing for other people so like situation are uh, unexpected so you need to understand this also that whatever you are doing for your child is you are doing very well and if you have, yeah, have any question you can uh, ask this question in the comment section i will happy to respond and these are my uh, whatsapp whatsapp number to my email also and uh, thank you so much for listening me uh, see you in the next uh, video bye bye allah hafiz